be changing out the rear tire. But you guys might enjoy seeing that process. This bike, I've installed an aftermarket exhaust on it and it covers up the axle bolt. So to get to everything, I'm gonna to have to take the shock absorbers off and I'm gonna to have to raise, let the bike down so it raises the rear tire up so I can get the axle clear of the pipes. I'll start by taking those off. Depending on your seat, you may or may not have to take it off to get to the top one. This is an aftermarket seat. It's a Mustang seat and it's got the flaps that come down and cover up the top bolts for the shock. So I'll have to take that off too. It's just a single bolt in the back of the seat behind the pillion pad. small nylon washer that goes underneath for the back mount for the seat to help keep it from scratching the fender. Now I can get to the upper bolts for the shock. Those are also 14 millimeters. I've got the bike already blocked up on our Black Widow bike jack. And I've got it up high enough the rear wheel's not on the ground. So I'm gonna let it down until the rear wheel just touches and takes the tension off the shock. So I just adjusted the bike until I got the tension off the shock absorber, which made it easier to pull off. Mm. Now I'm going to let the, butt, the bike down until the axle bolt will come out over top of the bike. Over here on the left side is a 27 millimeter. And it's usually torqued pretty tight. And now I'm going to take the pinch bolt loose on this side. Bolt? What's a pitch bolt? The side of this act, this side of the axle, is a large machine diameter that slides into the swing arm. It's not threaded on this side. The nut that tightens it is on the other side, mm -hmm. so it slides into this side. What this bolt does is clamp the swing arm around it. Oh, okay. So that this end can't spin. Take a soft hammer and just tap the axle over. And just walk out.
it has a bead breaker in it and then you can get a, the attachment for it for doing motorcycle tires. I'll put down a foam mat so I don't scratch up my brake disc. I'm going to put a block of wood down so I don't scratch up my rim. This handle fits awful loose inside of here, so I have a space piece of pipe that tightens it up. I gotta flip it over and do the other side. set up to hold the rim still while you work the tire off and work your new one on. This particular unit, Dad modified for us. These clamps usually get kind of loose and they flop around. They've had shims added to them. There are holes where you can put pins in and you can slide them in and out, put the pins either through them or behind them to adjust for the size wheel you're working on. Um, he made modifications where you can also adjust these screw bolts to give you better adjustment and to get the wheel more lined up so your big long center bar that you push against for pulling the tire off lines up better. This bar is what you're going to be pulling against as you use the bar to peel the tire off. It needs to be lined up to go through the bearings. And down into the hole in the center of the machine. It just takes a little adjusting to get it to where the bar will be down through. Well, I'm seeing down in the bottom. Once you have that and where set. Where do you want those inside? So once you have that center bar set, these blocks, if you want to look up under here, you want them set so that this little notch it's going to go right up around the rim. And these blocks that are in here are nylon so they won't scratch the rim. There are aftermarket blocks that you can buy. We'll leave a link and name and manufacturer in the description. What are you using? Dawn dish soap mixed with water. Dish soap by itself will work, but it has a tendency to dry out fairly quick. And once it dries out, it's no longer slippery, it's sticky. This 
tire bar has a nylon end on it made by a company called No More. And this can get in there and it can ride around the rim as you peel the tire off without scratching the rim up. I can take the locking nuts off of the tube and then I'll pull the tube out and we'll get the other side out. Wow, that tire. I cannot believe you rode that thing up till now. I got all the tread off of it. <laughs> yeah. At least in the middle. So does the Harley have tube tires too? No, the Harley tubeless. tubeless tires. Okay. Now, something people do ask is, can you put tubes in tubeless tires? And the answer is yes. Spoked rims, like this bike uses, you have to use an inner tube. But the tires on it, even from the day it was new, are rated as tubeless tires. So why because it's spoked? What is it about the spoke that makes it where the necessary? Just, where the spokes go down through the rim? Yeah. It's very hard to make it that way and have it hold air. Okay. In recent years they have started making bikes that have spokes set up in a way they can run tubeless tires, but that's not the way this one's done. Okay. tube and rim strap. You'll save yourself a lot of trouble down the road. Now I see what you mean about not airtight and why it's not airtight. Yeah, because these adjusters have to be yeah. able to turn to tighten and loosen the spokes and adjust the rim. you've got to port, just take a look and see if you notice anything, any major rust or pitting. This one's got a little bit of rust on it. It's not bad. The bike has over 120,000 miles on it, so. Not bad. I don't think we can complain about it too much. Have you registered for it? Do you match those holes up? Yep. So it has a hole for the, for the valve stem, and it lines up with the hole in the rim. And then just make sure it's centered in this groove in the center of the rim. So, the 
tires, they've started putting a little yellow mark on them, which is supposed to indicate where you put the valve stem. I don't know if it makes a big difference for balancing the tire or not, but that's what I'm going to go with. years ago is put the tube in the tire get it situated and then put a little bit of air in it make it fill out not enough that it's really holding the tire apart or that it's swelling up great big but just enough that it kind of fills out a little bit. That can actually help keep you from pinching it on the rim when you're trying to walk the tire on. Take the nuts loose. Put a box onto the rim. compress completely flat like it was it'll still hold its shape for the most part but it won't be fighting us with the tire and trying to hold the tire apart while we're trying to get it on now the tires are also directional meaning they're intended to rotate a certain direction the side that's up goes towards the final drive which is the left side of the bike tire should rotate this way. There's an arrow on the tire that shows the drive direction. So when the tire is standing up on the bike, this is the way we want it to roll. So this side is going to go towards our final drive. that we ordered from Amazon, and I've got some Motion Pro rim protectors. These will slide over the rim as I'll use the bar to work the tire on and help keep it from scratching up. Links to those will be in the description. This thing is called a tire thing. It's a bead keeper. What you can do is slide it on the rim, walk it around, and use it to hold the tire in place and keep, keep it from walking this side up while you're trying to walk the bead in on this side. way better than when you used to have to walk it around just with the spoons on the ground or did, you didn't even have spoons you had what you have just pry bars pry bars yeah this is much better than trying to chase it around the floor instead of pry bars
Watts demonstrate. I lined up with our mark on the tire. Alright, so put the valve stem back in. Always be careful how much air you're putting in the tire when you're seeding the beads. I don't like putting in any more than the tire is actually rated for. And if I have to, I'll go back and break the beads loose, let the air out of it, put some more salt on it, walk it around. Ooh, pop. There it is. Now we're right at the rated tire pressure. It all seated up. Let me get a close up of those little lines you were talking about. With it all seated up, you can see the lines on the tire, and you can look and see that they're even all the way around the rim. That lets you know that the tire has come up and it's sitting against this edge of the rim all the way around. And you gotta look for it on both sides. So now you're going to balance it? Yep. So I need to move over there. Yeah, over to the bench. Um, you can order these. You got this one from Harbor Freight. My lovely wife bought it for me. Um, Bike Master offers one that you can get from Amazon. You can find them on your different motorcycle parts websites. They're fairly inexpensive. They range, I guess, anywhere from like 60 to 130, 140 bucks, depending on what you get, with may buy. And this is the kind of balancing I've done on my tires for like the last 15 years, and I've never had any trouble doing it this way. And we'll put links in the description for all the, for much of the stuff that we're using that we can find and give it to you guys. So this rod just has cone shaped attachments and we're going to push them in so that they lock in and center in the wheel bearings. So, okay. There is a camera behind you too. <laughs> Catching a better side. <laughs> so I'm just making sure that it's roughly the same distance on both sides. This would be an eighth of an inch. I don't know that it matters a whole lot for balancing the wheel, but even is even on both sides. Now this still has the old wheel weights on it, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and peel them off. Anytime you're doing 
wheeling and tires, it's also a good idea to go ahead and check your wheel bearings. I checked those before we started running the camera. And what I did was while the wheel was still mounted on the bike, I took and tried to work it side to side and up and down and made sure that it was tight and didn't have any play in it. Your wheel bearings have play in them, your back wheel will be able to flop around, or your front wheel will be able to flop around, and you'll probably feel it, most noticeably in your corners, as the weight changes on the bike. Yeah. <laughs> The passenger can definitely feel that. I'm sure the rider can too. So I've got the rim all cleaned up. And I'm going to watch the seat where it kind of settles. It seems to want to settle right there, so I'm going to put a mark on the rim to show that's the bottom or the heavy spot. I'm going to back it up about a quarter of a turn and let it go. And that spot falls to the bottom again. Put it up on this side just to make sure it's not a fluke. And that spot falls to the bottom again. Is that where the valve stem is? Nope. Oh, that's funny. It's actually about a quarter turn out from the valve stem. So where'd you put your mark on this side? I put the mark oh, I here. see it. So that's on the bottom again. So that's the heavy spot of the tire. So now we need to do is figure out how much... How many weights to put on? We need to put on the balance. So you put the weights on where it's heavy? No, you put them on opposite. That's what I thought. So, so why are you marking? So, just so I know where the heavy spot is. Okay. Change taking that tag off didn't make a difference. What was it like a price tag or a yeah. manufacturer, whatever, some barcode tag or something? So I'll put on about a half an ounce. And what I'm going to do is rotate it so that it's at 90 degrees. Yeah. From the heavy spot. And it looks like that spot's still heavy because that spot is falling down to the bottom again. That's the whole point behind balancing the tires is when the stuff's made, it's going to have spots that are heavier oh, than others. Here we go! Right now, that's not trying to move. So what I'm going to do is I'll turn it about an eighth of a turn. Is it still going to that heavy spot on that side, that other side? Nope. No? Yeah, it did. Just a little.
using Motion Pro, the adhesive tire weights. There again, you can order them off the internet. We'll leave the link in the description. You can get those on Amazon? Sure can, that's where I got these. All right, cool. Cleaned it up and uh, put a little bit of grease around it where the wheel seal goes just to lubricate the seal. And then this is the splines that fit into the final drive on the bike. This is the shaft drive bike. And so I'm just going to put some grease around the splines to keep them lubricated. dirt around here and looking at this seal because this is what holds the oil in the final drive and this seal starts leaking you'll see it running down here and you'll get oil slinging out onto the rear wheel okay so no oil no oil looks good
anytime I'm doing any kind of major component work, I always look up the torque specs and I torque everything to what it says in the factory manual. It's just, I don't like taking chances. Especially when it comes to doing stuff like wheels, suspension, steering, any of the critical parts that are really going to affect how the bike handles. tire changer with the motorcycle tire adapter. The adapter just screws down onto the top of it and locks down with a locking bolt. This one has had some modifications made to it. So the white pieces are blocks that are available off the internet. We'll give you the name and description and link in, in our video description. Um, and then he adapted them so that they'll fit in these holders. And these nylon blocks grab the rim without scratching it. So just 16 inch tire spoons that are ordered off of Amazon. They're pretty cheap. It was like 30 bucks for the set of three. Very inexpensive. Certainly helps make the job easier. And this is a tire thing, bead grabber. And this is the piece you saw me lock onto the rim and it keeps the tire from walking back off as you walk the rest of it on with the tire bars. Very handy. That'll also be in the description, links in the description. These are rim protectors from Motion Pro. Back. These just snap on the rim right at where the tire goes on and you walk your bars across this instead of your rim and it keeps you from scratching the rims up. Okay. Very cheap, like 20 bucks for the set. So this bar that I was using to work the tires off, it has a nylon end on it from Nomar. And it's made out of nylon, hard plastic, so that you can walk it against the rim without it scratching your rims up. Okay, the tire balancer. So this is our tire balancer. This one's made by Pittsburgh. It's their Pittsburgh motorcycle wheel balancing stand. This one came from Harbor Freight. It's a fairly inexpensive tool, but with a little time and a little patience, it works really, really well. Uh, you can find others available on Amazon. We'll put names and descriptions in the link.